Sagittarius, like Scorpius before it, sits fairly low on the horizon. I've seen the star pattern for this constellation represented in various ways, sometimes including stars that are kind of harder to see. However, the star pattern designated by the International Astronomical Union focuses mainly on eight stars, which are all fairly bright and not too low on the horizon, so it's pretty easy to see. When I tried to get a picture of this constellation in July, there was a bright full moon passing by and then there were several cloudy nights afterwards. Finally, in about the middle of August, there was a moonless sky with a cloudless night, and I was able to get a pretty decent picture of it. So, let's draw upon the constellation Sagittarius to learn more about the night sky. So here's my picture of Sagittarius, and right now this is about what it looked like for me when I was outside. Um, you could see a couple of stars, and mainly the, the easiest ones to see here was the eight inside there that formed the constellation um, star pattern of Sagittarius right there. There are other ones that you can see. Um, some of the stars that are just a little bit dimmer show up with more exposure like that. But again, a lot of those you won't see as well, depending on the conditions, of course, and how well your eyes are adapted to the darkness. Um, you may see some of that. In fact, there are some special objects that we'll talk about up in here, there I believe, that, uh, that you might be able to see. But it just really depends on the conditions and where you're at. Normally, you're likely just going to be able to see those eight stars in there. All right, let's move on. You can see Sagittarius after sunset from July to October. The month of August is a great time to look for it. In that month, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you can look due south between 9 and 11 p.m. That's Sagittarius's highest point when it crosses the celestial meridian. That's the imaginary line that divides east from west. To find Sagittarius, look for these eight bright stars that resemble a teapot. Recognizable shapes within a constellation like this one are called asterisms. This teapot asterism is fitting because if it's dark enough to see the Milky Way, then the foggy clouds of our galactic center rise out of the teapot spout like steam. It's a perfect picture. Sagittarius is bright enough that you should be able to spot it without any trouble if you're looking in the right direction during the right time of the year. But another way to find it is to look for a bright red star called Antares. That is the eye of the scorpion. From Antares, look east about 25 degrees. To measure that distance, Hold your hand out at arm's length with your pinky and your thumb extended. That's where you'll find the teapot. Sagittarius is Latin for archer. Its root, sagitta, means arrow. In Greek mythology, it's usually depicted as a centaur archer, sometimes identified as Chiron, the son of the titan Cronus and the water nymph Philyra. While most centaurs were notorious for being wild and violent creatures, Chiron was said to be intelligent, civilized, and kind. In the sky, Sagittarius's arrow points at the heart of the scorpion. You can follow the path of Delta and Gamma Sagittarii towards Antares. Let's talk some more about specific stars. Epsilon Sagittarii is the brightest star in this constellation, and it is also called Caus Australis, which is Arabic for southern part of the bow. It is about 143 light years away and has a visual magnitude of 1.85. This star, together with Caus Media and Caus Borealis, represents the bow held by the archer. The second brightest star in this constellation is Sigma Sagittarii, also called Nanki. The meaning of this name is unclear, but it's thought to represent the sacred Babylonian city of Eridu on the Euphrates River. This star's magnitude is 2.08, and it lies about 228 light years away. Like Scorpius, Sagittarius is positioned near the center of the Milky Way, where there are a lot of star clusters and other deep sky objects to look for. The whole area of clouds near the teapot spout is called the Large Sagittarius Star Cloud. It is the brightest visible region of the Milky Way. And you can see that here in this picture. In that area, you can find Messier 20, also known as the Trifid Nebula, which is an unusual combination of three kinds of nebula, an emission nebula, reflection nebula, and a dark nebula. I won't go into the differences between those in this video, but maybe another time. The Trifid Nebula also includes an open star cluster, which means a loose grouping of stars. You can apparently see its color through a telescope without the need of a long exposure. Close by is the Lagoon Nebula, also known as Messier 8, 
It is a giant interstellar cloud classified as an emission nebula and is one of the only two star forming nebula faintly visible to the naked eye from mid northern latitudes. Its visual magnitude is 6, so you'll need excellent conditions to see it, and without a long exposure photograph, it'll look mostly gray. It's between 4,000 and 6,000 light years away. Finally, I'll point out Messier 54, near the bottom left of the teapot by Zeta Sagittari. This is a globular star cluster, meaning a tight grouping of stars, estimated to be a whopping 87,000 light years away. It was first discovered by Charles Messier in 1778, but it wasn't until 1994 that astronomers learned it is most likely beyond our Milky Way galaxy, probably belonging to the Sagittarius dwarf elliptical galaxy. Although it contains thousands of stars, it is so far away that even through most amateur telescopes, it still looks like a singular spot of light. Well, that's all for now. There's still plenty more to look for, but we'll stop this video now. I, for one, am excited to take my telescope out and see if I can find some of these things. If I do and I can get some good pictures of them, I will post them online at a special place for you guys to see called Patreon. You can now sign up to receive exclusive updates and extra content. You can get some digital downloads of my art for some out of this world desktop wallpapers. That's right, I'm making these pictures into desktop wallpaper backgrounds that you can download. It's pretty cool. I use them as my desktop, so. Or maybe you want a special sticker designed right here on this channel. Yeah, you can get that there too. Find out all the perks and support me at patreon.com slash Link below. That's all for now. Next time the sky is clear, take a moment to get outside and admire the stars. See if you can spot the Milky Way steaming out of the teapot. Could be cool. Please have a good day. Keep looking up and remember to smile.